Hi everyone, I am on the sidelines of Ground Zero in Delhi. It's the month of what? November? <coughs> 2014, right? And we have Navakuman, old friend, uh, Iron Wasp, inventor, developer, internet, oh sorry, security guru, everything, whatever you would like to have in security, that's him. And he's going to tell us about what he's doing and much more. Baba, all yours. Yes. Talk to you for a few minutes. Okay. Tell us about you, yourself, how did you come here, what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, hi guys, uh, so I have been in the field of security for about nine years now. Uh, I started off, uh, I'm from a non-IT background. I did my electrical and electronics engineering. I was never interested in the field. I came out and then uh, my first job was in the field of networking. I did my CCMA, I'm from Warrington Networking. I found uh, computer networks really fascinating. Uh, but just by accident, the first company I was working with was into security as well. So they kind of pushed me against my own interest. I wanted to work in networking, but they kind of pushed me into security. <laughs> so it's very ironic that uh, uh, you know the field which I was so uh, initially against getting into, I ended up uh, loving so much and spending so much time. So I, uh, I'm naturally a very curious guy. I get a lot of ideas and I'm usually stupid enough to work on my ideas as well, uh, sacrificing my own personal uh, uh, plans and so on. So I started in the field of uh, uh, computer security and uh, I was very, very, uh, you could say, uh, I was basically a noob, not just in, in terms of security, but in terms of uh, computer knowledge as well. So I had to learn uh, a lot uh, from systems to networks to programming uh, and uh, it's, it's all been a big journey of self-learning and every time I, uh, I read about something I, I get more questions and I want answers for that and usually the people who used to work with me and talk to them they, they yeah. didn't uh, have those answers which meant I had to go looking yeah, for yeah, it online. Sir. But Lavakuma, I want to ask you something. You just mentioned, you use the word security a number of times. Mm -hmm. So when you say you learn security or you, what area of security do you sort of get into learning? Mm -hmm. So any specific thing like, you know, when you say I'm learning, I learned to hack, I learned to do web pen testing or a certain tool or something or web application, you know, certain, right, right. so can you just let us know in that area? Okay, yes. Yeah. So, uh, Effectively, the things which I've had to learn have been kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, in a sense, de depended on the job requirements I had. So, for example, the first company I was working with, they had specific requirements from their employees, and those are things I, wanted, uh, I had to learn about. So, in security, largely it's been uh, penetration testing. That's, you know, that's that's the area I had to focus on. So, I used to do network penetration testing and web application penetration testing, I mean like the whole suit basically. I never really got into system level security which is buffer overflows and all of that. I've always stayed away from that. Uh, and uh, I've also flirted with uh, uh, auditing and process a little bit. It, it was it was not to my liking at all. <laughs> And I was, I was doing network security and uh, uh, web application security and uh, after a period of time I found the web application AppSec to be uh, very exciting. I ha in the network area I have uh, done some interesting things. Uh, Scappy was a library which I used to use a lot, write a lot of internal tools uh, for doing, you know, for discovering new kinds of security problems and so on. Uh, but then uh, AppSec is where my heart really was, uh, you know, that's the area I found really interesting. And uh, uh, I'm a lazy guy, so whenever I, f I, I you know, discover a technique for uh, discovering a vulnerability or so on, I read about it or something, I always try to automate it for my own personal use. And because I have to automate, I you know, learn about programming and I learn about a specific library. And that's how it started. And after a certain point, I started getting bigger ambitions so I was automating little little things I wanted to write uh, the, the tools I was using at the time the uh, the shortcomings they had I wanted to kind of solve it because I thought uh, you know uh, security testing could be done in a much better way and we, we need uh, tools designed in a you know, very different manner to solve the problem 
So that's uh, kind of how my journey in the Iron Wasp area started. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started writing a uh, HTTP intercepting proxy. But why, why, where did you get the name Iron Wasp from? <laughs> okay, so that's largely because I used uh, two libraries called Iron Python and Iron Ruby for scripting. So they, those were two major components in, okay. uh, in my software. Yeah. So I had Iron from that. So because I had Iron Python and Iron Ruby, I wanted to use Iron in the name. And uh, Wasp was just, I, I wanted to <laughs> <laughs> come up with something yeah. which looks like a word. Yeah, your beard stings. <laughs> so, <laughs> she came to the bike. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so I had, that, that word had to have W in it because it was web application. So then, you know, I okay. kind of put, uh, cool. came up with a few So now we know where it comes from. Yes. So that's, that's now recording history. <laughs> So, okay, great. So, then how did you sort of put the thought of Iron Wasp out as an open source project or something? Yes. Uh, so, I started working on this intercepting proxy very long time back and after a while I stopped working on it. I started focusing on some other research activity. Uh, I did a lot of work in Google Gears. I wrote a tool called Imposter. And then I uh, wrote a tool called Shell of the Future. and. Uh, then I was working on HTML5 related uh, issues. I wrote a tool called Raven, another one called JS Recon. Okay. I, I wrote like wow. a bunch of uh, tools. That's a lot of uh, stuff, man. Yes, I <laughs> published a few research papers and everything. And uh, then I was invited to speak at Black Hat Abu Dhabi. And once I came back from Black Hat, I was like, you know, I, I've done research for uh, the last one, one and a half years. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. But then it's, it's probably a good time I go back to my original project right. and continue that. So then I went back to it and then I started building it uh, and okay so that's that's how uh, it, it happened and the rationale for making it open source is largely because uh, Stay out <laughs> Recording in progress Yeah Huh. Yeah, so the rationale for making it open source was because when I was developing the uh, intercepting proxy, I had to refer to a lot of other uh, open source tools to kind of figure out how these things can be built. Yeah. Save it. <laughs> that was a slight interruption. <laughs> so. Uh, I, I come up with ideas of how a particular uh, uh, feature could be built, but then I do not know if that's the right way to do or if yeah. someone has you know, solved the problem in a better way or right. at least I need validation if I'm going the right direction. So I usually tend to look at source code of other open source tools and you know make sure that hey, I'm at least somewhere in the somewhere, region. Yeah. And even when I was writing, uh, uh, being a tester, I used to look at the source code of the to tools to figure out what exactly they do. Right? Yeah. Uh, because so from the manual you only get to learn how to use a tool. Right. But when you read the code you actually get to learn so much more. So how, how do you like tell other guys in India, let's say Chennai, Bangalore and places, there are lots of enthusiasts who may want to like you know get out of the rut uh -huh. and uh, get into developing their own tool and like you've been doing that while you were working on a, on a full-time job, right? Yes. So right now you're not taking, you don't have a full-time job. I have. You still have a full-time job. No, but your your product is a full-time job, yes. right? So earlier it was a FTE, yes. you're employed, and, and this was on the on the, field. On the side, yes. and then you quit, and you are now full-time into yes. your product your product by itself, yes. right? But while you were working, mm -hmm. you did develop tools or you know like you said scripts, tools, yes. whatever which you have put out. Yes. So how how would you? Uh, is it like a culture? Exactly. Do you know a lot of people who do that or is it like you were one of a few people? Well, uh, all the tools I did use when I was starting off initially, hmm. right? a lot of these tools were open source, which were all written by people, you know, uh, other researchers. Not Indian? Not Indian necessarily, uh, but people from other parts of the world. Right, no, no, that's what I'm coming to. Uh -huh. See, you are Indian. So right. the, my point is that we a lot of people say that we tend to use stuff. Uh -huh. We don't tend to develop. Right. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to, because oh, you have been right, part of the right, development, I, 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 you were in the community or you, you know, one is that you are from the highest community, right. the second is that you have developed tools which you have put out in the open source mm -hmm. and people right. are world over using your right. development right. stuff. Right. Right. So have you seen uh, an interest among people to develop their own tools or have you seen an interest which is more towards using tools and saying that's it? Okay, so 
always the percentage of consumers is going to be has significantly to be. higher than the percentage ha yes, of producers. Yes, ha has to be. Yes. Yeah. But then the good thing is, uh, in India, uh, things are maturing. <laughs> I myself have been a beneficiary of this, you know, uh, uh, the change in attitude because right. uh, had I come into the industry probably 15, uh, 20 years back, then uh, had I been you know, focusing on developing tools and everything, it yeah. would have never been never. appreciated by never. the own manager. Absolutely. In fact, they would have discouraged me from doing it. Yes. And Absolutely. there would be no community where I can go present it, meet yeah. like-minded people. Right. Unless you have someone patting you on the back, yeah. you are never, you know, uh, the, the level of motivation dies down. Correct, also. correct, correct. I think I was uh, in the country at the right time because not only was the people I was reporting to, yeah. They are, you know, people who were smart enough to really understand, understand. what I was doing and appreciate it. Yeah. Also, was the community. We had the, the security conferences happening in India. Yeah. We had the local security community. So there, when I present something, you always have people so who appreciate. You get feedback and yes. Yes. So without that, I, I it would probably not gone this far. And I think now, uh, you know, uh, this is only increasing more. There are more people. Uh, the percentage of people who write their own tools and everything, yeah. it has increased significantly. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, Nalcon, I'm on the review panel and uh, every year when I look at papers, the number of Indian researchers who are, you know, uh, submitting, making a submission about their own tool has gone up, uh, you know, considerably. Oh, okay. That's good. That's, That's good, good news. Yeah, that's a good thing, absolutely. The level of, I would say, entrepreneurship or invention, I would yes. say, you know, so, yeah. So let's hope that tribe increases. So how, so for somebody who is not doing this, so what would you say, like, you know, people stand up saying, time me, uh, or, you know, who, why should I do it? Yeah. And in any case, life is going on, so why, you know, why? Right. Uh, of course, you went the extra mile, or you thought differently, or you thought off the beaten track. So what would you say to a person like that? How do you motivate somebody to build something, and, you know, do something much more than, uh, just the convenience or use somebody else's creations, you know. Right, right. So. Well, I think uh, everybody sh everybody is creative in their own right. Yeah. You know, we all have ideas that we want to work on. Uh, but I think at some point of time, when we do the cost-benefit analysis of, hey, do I, when I try to pursue my idea, this is the cost associated with it. I, I would want to give away my TV watching time or I want to skip a movie or something. Yeah. That's when most people tend to, you know... Uh, Take it easy yeah. over there. <laughs> <laughs> now go for it. Yeah. But I think if you really believe in your idea, yeah. and, uh, uh, well, it, it might need not necessarily be something big, but if you never get into the habit of converting your ideas into reality, yeah. then you, I mean, your whole life, in a certain sense, uh, you know, uh, could, could... So you're just then in that case going... Yes, it, it, it could actually turn out to be very yeah, you're bad. Not, you're not a leader, you're just part of the herd. You don't have to be a leader necessarily, there is less fun. Correct, correct. I mean, I mean you, you could fall in love with uh, multiple people, but if you never go and approach the girl, yeah. you're oh, yeah. always you got a it right. You got, you got it right. So, yes, yes. I mean, you like someone, you at least go tell them. So, yes. I think that's that's what... And if you strongly feel, if you feel very strongly about a particular idea, yes. you should invest on it, yeah. see how far it goes. It might not go very Great. far, but in the process, you would you know actually learn a lot. Awesome. Great. Thanks a lot. And, uh, as we close this, I just have a last question for you is that like Iron Wasp is what you are promoting right now. Yes. Normally I do not talk about product <laughs> and uh, frankly, you know, I, 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 you know me for many right. years, so I, even when I present I don't talk about product right. or anything. Right. It's always a thought or an idea or whatever, right. so you're right here, but here I'm, I'm as excited as you are okay. about what you are developing and what you are doing and uh, I will surely want to put Iron Wasp out there and on my website also whenever I can and uh, but the question which I have for you is that uh, you've come a long way so what, how do you see the future for Iron Wasp a, or we make it very short okay. uh, and second is that do you have any more you know uh, such in, inventive uh, things on, up your sleeve like you know well, I, okay, so uh, about the inventive ideas, I do have a bunch of them up my sleeve. I'd rather not talk about yeah, them. Yeah, obviously not. I don't expect you to do sort of... Uh, yeah, but I, I do have... Uh, so, so we are looking at more from the Iron Wars table. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, great.
so, so the only limitation I have right now is time to work on it. Right. So there is no short in the bike. Okay. So great. And how is the Iron Wars uh, future like in the short term? Because you're looking at a big bang, uh, hopefully happening soon. So uh, what sort of inquiries, requirements, or potentials, you know, which you have got in the last couple of days over here, or in the last couple of months, or whenever you started marketing it? Because you're not a marketing person. Yes. Now you're one person who's a developer who has had to, he has to doff uh, the ma the manager hat, right, right. the administrator hat, the HR hat, everything. everything. So you you are the one man army. Right. So how do you? Uh, of course, you must. You are happy with what you have done. That's obvious because you are still doing the distance yourself. So what do you? What would you put yourself in terms of you know? the interest which is has generated commercially speaking right, right. so one is okay everybody comes and says you're good because they know you and they like right, you right. but keeping that aside keeping that you know right. Uh, right. love affair aside right. aside pragmatically right. how in terms of commercial potential in the next right. six months one year right how do you how do you see it? Okay, okay. I, again, I don't. I'm not asking for numbers. Right, right. I'm asking for good, like bad, general, good, like bad, high, medium, low, whatever something. Uh, well, uh, in terms of you know people liking me and you know them appreciating me, I try to keep that feedback on a separate Absolutely, basket. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, so here in the last few days, uh, so I've been at a QA conference and now at Ground Zero, the the commercial product that I've developed, I've I've only developed it based on. Uh, you know, a lot of feedback from a specific group in the market, which said, "Hey, this is one problem we are trying to solve, and there is nothing, you know, currently available which does solve the problem." Yeah. So that's why I've created the commercial tool. And when people who have this exact same problem, uh, you know, folks I've met here in Ground Zero and other places, and way when they listen, you know, about the uh, product that we have built and how it works and everything, they are very interested in the concept. I mean, they don't even know me. These people. Right. Right. They're only interested in the concept, and they want to, uh, you know, try it out as uh, soon as as soon as like, we release it. Yeah. So the interest is definitely there, and uh, in terms of how well it goes, we'll you know have to wait and uh, see sure. how it goes. But yeah. then, uh, I'm a person who does not, you know, give up that easily. No. Like, if something doesn't work, I always tweak, and right. but right. We, we're getting have very good early signs. So we'll see how. It Maybe next year I, I should be in a position. No, of course we've talked to you before that also. <laughs> And uh, so, in terms of the future, do you see yourself continuing to be in India, or again, like you know, like all uh, inventors or entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. Silicon Valley mm -hmm. beckons you? <laughs> well, there's, there's a lot of benefits to being in the valley. I was uh, my, my the technology we developed got an award from Lockheed Martin and Department of Science and Technology. Yeah. And we were in the valley for a week, talking to you know a lot of other entrepreneurs and other people. There are a lot of benefits to being in the Silicon Valley. Uh, so I would definitely want to make use of those benefits, but I don't have to be there to make use of them. What about awards in India? I'm sorry? Any Indian awards? Oh, this this was an award uh, for me. No. Department of Science and Technology. DST as a India? Yes, okay. Indian DST and Lockheed. Okay, okay. Yeah, DST Bangalore, right? So, uh, Department of Science and Technology. Uh, so they have, a, they have a... Okay, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that way I... Uh, uh, like, it's going to be based out of India. We would obviously expand. Good. Great. That's uh, how it is. Not bad. Great, great. Thanks a lot. And uh, uh, last is a shameless self promotion plug also. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, of course, be sharing the link with you. And I hope you'll place the link on your website. Sure. And uh, I, I'm sure, I, I do hope there'll, there'll be a lot of guys viewing this and wanting to come and try, test out, and buy. Sure. I'm possible. Actually. Well, good luck. And uh, it'll be meet the next time. Okay. And Thank you're you next time. Uh, so Thanks. Thanks. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. For, uh,